You are watching ACC Men's Soccer on the ACC Network. It's the penultimate weekend of conference play from the banks of the Ohio River. The Louisville Cards playing host to the Virginia Tech Hokies with postseason implications on the line. Here are your ACC standings. Louisville and Virginia Tech battling it out for one of the final few spots in the ACC tournament. And I can't believe it, partner, but we are pitch side, bringing you live soccer in person. Matt Schumacher, Jeff Greer with you. And Jeff, let's set it up. What are you excited about in this matchup tonight? I mean, there's everything to play for. They're trying to get into that ACC tournament. What else do you need for motivation? It's a big-time matchup. Two teams that are desperate for a win makes for exciting storylines throughout the 90 minutes tonight. Louisville has struggled to score a little bit this season, but they certainly do not lack capable goal scorers up top. Elijah Ambo back in the lineup after missing a handful of games. He provides a lot of pace that they desperately needed. A lot of pace, a lot of strength, good finisher in front of goal for sure. And of course, Pedro Fonseca feeding Ambo on this goal, but Pedro Fonseca, magical with the ball at his feet as well. A little Brazilian. He loves having the ball at his feet. He's great in small spaces. Look at this finish here. Unbelievable touch. Great player for Louisville. Their playmaker. From distance, he will test the star for Virginia Tech in the net. Matthias Swaneveld, who is back in the lineup after missing the last two games with injury. 61 starts, Jeff Greer, for Swaneveld in net. They, you can't replace experience, Matt. I mean, that's what he brings. You know what you have with him when he's in between the pipes. And you know what you got with Christo Strickler as well. Had a brace against Pitt. They'll be looking to get him going tonight against Louisville. Fun matchup around the corner here at the Derby City. We are moments away from lineups and kickoff coming your way next on the ACC Network. The COVID shortened season. Still nice to honor the seniors for the last regular season home game at Louisville this year. Lamine Conti, Jake Galnovac, two names that many folks around the program became familiar with. Here's your starting 11 for the Louisville Cards. Interesting, they've got Pedro Fonseca up top, partner. Yeah, that's not normally where we see him. Normally he's in the center of the midfield, but he's so creative. You want to try to get ways to get him in front of goal for you. What better way to do that than put him at strike? A 4-2-3-1 for John Michael Hayden. Meanwhile, for Mike Brizendine's team, they have Labovitz and Strickler up top, and that tandem is deadly when they are feeling it. Absolutely, two of the best goal scorers in the conference. Gonna give Louisville plenty to think about tonight. And Danny Pereira in the midfield, he can absolutely thread it. Last year, ACC Freshman of the Year, he's picked up right where he left off in his sophomore campaign. Virginia Tech in the all-white road kit. Christo Strickler, the senior from Hilliard, Ohio, had the brace against Pitt, has not scored in the previous or in the next two games, however. Both teams will take any part of the ACC unity that has been shown across the conference throughout the season. They had unity week last week. But each match... All teams across the ACC showing unity with each other, taking a knee before the start of the match. Louisville in the all-dark, checkered home kits. There is Pedro Fonseca and Elijah Amo behind him. And John Michael Hayden will hope that, A, they play with a full 11 for all 90 minutes, something they have not done since the game against Notre Dame on October the 3rd, and B, they'll hope Amo and Fonseca can connect like they did earlier this season. How about this, Matt? Five red cards this season, five and six matches, and that just puts you always in a position where you're scrambling a little bit as both a coach and uh, teammates of the guys who are not out there. To play a man down in this league, brutal, in one match, put you at a significant disadvantage, but in three straight matches. It's remarkable, really, that Louisville didn't lose all three of those games. That's true. And it, you know what? When you play the style that Louisville does, where you're trying to pack it in a little bit and then spring the counterattack, you need all of your bodies. You need all of your personnel, your resources back defending so that you can feed the ball out 
and play up the pitch a little bit more, but it's difficult to do that when you're down a man. Swanavell puts it into the middle of the field. Here is Strickler now on the far side. Strickler playing it forward. Virginia Tech likes to play aggressively. And our first look at Jake Gelnovac tonight coming off his line to secure the ball. Gelnovac, a tremendous presence in net for Louisville. He's made 52 career starts. And somebody that surely will at least have a chance to play Major League Soccer when his career is all said and done here at the University of Louisville. Comes from a soccer family. His dad, of course, the coach, well-known coach at Virginia. Big-time soccer family, so you are not surprised to hear that he's had a great career at Louisville. Two Something of the best I'm, keepers in the country playing yeah, tonight. Unbelievable. Something I'm noticing here, Matt, right away, Fonseca drifting out wide right a little bit, and Amo pinching inside. And they've also got Nico Diaz, who we know is a, a, an incredible goal scorer coming through the ranks as a prospect before college, drifting out to the left. That allows Carlos Sanchez to operate in the middle. Diaz, one of 10 freshmen added to the roster this year, has it jarred loose, has a real nose for goal. Comes at the right time as well because Louisville last year, 28 goals for 120th in the country. And so that was a point of emphasis coming into the 2020 campaign for John Michael Hayden. Virginia on the attack now. It's a Virginia team that I'm surprised to say they have not yet won a game this season. They've only played three matches. Did not have a preseason or exhibition campaign, so they got right into the mix playing ACC opponents from week one. Started their season off with a game against number one Pitt. Oh, in the area. And booted away that time by Haji Abdekadir. Virginia Tech really, you love playing in a formation the way that uh, Virginia Tech plays where you've got Kinua kind of as your holding midfielder. So if you're a, a midfielder who wants to get forward and attack, knowing you've got someone holding back in front of your center backs, it's a lot of fun to play with them because that means you can go try to get goals. And we already saw there where he drops back and everybody else pretty much gets forward and they feel comfortable Nobody can clean up for Pereira going down and a restart coming for Virginia Tech. They are led by 12th year head coach Mike Brizendine, whose club has really accelerated this program's growth over the last few seasons. One of just eight teams in Division I soccer who have made the NCAA tournament each of the last three years, four of the remaining seven come from this conference, including the University of Louisville. Well, Brizendine is a guy who started out coaching with uh, recruiting challenges that they were going to face at, at Virginia Tech and has kind of built it from a slow burn to get to where they are now, where they're in this best run that they've had in program history. No doubt about that. Four straight seasons with double-digit wins. That's the longest streak since 2001-2007. And it's included a program record four straight seasons into the postseason. Pereira, short corner. Back to Pereira on the edge. And he sails it over the top bar. First real shot of the night for either side. And a goal kick coming now for Jake Elnavach. Trying a little uh, trickeration there, Matt. Didn't really pan out, but of course, I'm judging that on the results. You did get a clean look there for Pereira, getting it on his right foot. Looked like he tried to bend it, but he dipped his shoulders back and leaned back on it and sent it into the, the bleachers.
Virginia Tech and Louisville matched up twice last year. Split the season series one and one. Well, Virginia Tech got the last laugh, winning 2 0 in the opening round of the ACC tournament. Which <laughs> gives you an idea of just how strong this conference is. The fact that these two teams played each other in the first round. Ten teams from the ACC making the NCAA tournament last year. Across the box. Well blocked that time by Fonseca. Now Pereira tries to regather. I really like what Virginia Tech is doing here. They're letting Pereira just kind of move around wherever he can find some space. And that's likely to draw Louisville's midfielder's attention away and open up gaps on the other side. You already saw that nice cross in that shot got blocked, but already you can see where some of the chess pieces are moving on this board. Both teams made it to the Sweet 16 a season ago. Louisville, of course, falling to 2019 College Cup champion Georgetown. And Virginia Tech fell to Stanford. Blacklock gives it off to Pereira. Hounded by three Louisville defenders. We've called number nine's name a lot tonight. He is involved in almost every sequence of attack for Virginia Tech. Well, and it also is clear that Louisville is very aware of what he's capable of. Like you said, many three bodies around him as soon as the ball is at his feet. That's going to be an ongoing challenge for Louisville. Now a turnover in the midfield. Carlos Sanchez giving it forward to Elijah Amo. It is interesting here, Matt, as you watch. You can always tell teams when they're in possession versus out of possession what they're trying to do. And now you see Fonseca shading back into the middle of the field, very similar to Pereira, just kind of moving around, trying to drag defenders with him, get the ball at his feet, and see if they can find him. LaBelle up to Fastine. Knocked out of play. Nathan Durst coming over the red shirt sophomore. Louisville led by second year head coach John Michael Hayden, who's been with the program a lot longer as an assistant coach. Six years with the program as a whole. His team early on wrecked by personnel changes and a lack of players available. In fact, when the season kicked off, they had just 13 active players. Tough to play in this conference with two subs. Absolutely, and to consider they lost 20 goal score or 20 goals from last season. I mean, that is when you're talking earlier about the offensive challenges. That's a big, big loss for any coach. Ten players from last year's team either graduated, didn't come back due to COVID concerns in the United States, or transferred. So a lot of changes across the board for Louisville. Abdukadir goes back post. And a little too much heat behind it for Amo, who's in the area. There's two things you want to do on a corner kick, or I should say two things you don't want to do, Matt. One is you never want to leave it short and not clear that first defender. And the second is you don't want to play it where there is nobody. <laughs> uh, but he is normally, Abdi Kadir is normally an excellent set piece taker. So don't expect that to happen too often tonight. Matthias Swanevelt putting it past midfield. 6'4", senior from the Netherlands. Big, strong, confident senior in net. Mike Brizendine told us when he is in the starting lineup, which he has been for the last 61 straight matches that he's been available, there's just a calmness and a peace amongst the rest of the starting 10. And now perhaps an opportunity. Blacklock on the right side and misses far post by a hair. 
first real threatening opportunity for the Hokies tonight. The best way to tell if something truly was close is the reaction of the players. Blacklock, you can see his reaction immediately putting his hands on his head after missing it. Just dragged his laces across it a little too much. It was always tailing away. And to his credit, I do think Gelnovac may have seen the angle there, but it is tough to pick that up through the legs there, but it was always drifting away from goal, but a very, very good opportunity for Virginia Tech. Blacklock coming off the match against Syracuse in which he scored his first career goal. And that 1-1 draw with the Orange. And right away again, numbers coming forward for the men in white. Blacklock wide open on the right side. He's got his arms up, was looking for a cross. And instead, back to the cards. Louisville just doesn't seem to have had much rhythm through these first 13 to 15 minutes. They've got to get a little bit more confident on the ball, move people around to come to. That just gets you that little bit more comfortable uh, comfortability with uh, possession, feeling confident with the ball at your feet. But they're having to defend a lot here the first 15 minutes or so. Great tackle from Pedro Fonseca. Somebody who plays on both sides of the pitch. John Michael Hayden really pleased with the increased responsibility that Fonseca has taken on this year. He played just seven matches last year due to injury. He's been healthy this year. And as we talked about in the open, incredibly savvy with the ball at his feet. And he spent the, uh, I guess, lockdown, uh, COVID downtime, whatever you want to call it, the off season here and had a chance to get healthy. Just so talented with the ball at his feet, sees things that other people don't. And that's what you need in a playmaker. You need somebody who can really pick people out and pass them open and uh, have a chance to work on your game all off season and get healthy. It's really shown this season so far how much progress he's made. Challenge when you're playing a 4-4-2 a like this, as Virginia Tech is lined up, they put a lot of bodies in the middle of the field. Real challenging to develop any sort of possession. Coughed up again, Strickler gets it back. Here's Blacklock, and now back to Strickler. Well done by Jack Fenstein. Good tackle to get it out of play. Fastine and Portman in an early game death match for best slide tackles here, man. This is this both really impressive. Going to ground, last ditch tackles, you gotta get it inch perfect, and they've done well so far. Well, this Louisville back line has taken some heat this year because of the amount of goals that they've let up, but I think in part unfairly so, because this is a team, as we talked about, they played the last three matches with a man down for the majority of that match in the last two games. It's a long throw. And an easy call, foul on Labovitz. Sunday best this week will feature the field hockey match between Wake Forest and BC at noon Eastern, followed by a women's soccer triple header, Virginia Tech Boston College. Then fifth ranked Duke squares off against Miami and number one North Carolina host number 13 Notre Dame in Chapel Hill to round out our Sunday best. It's all right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Lots of good soccer on the women's side as their season starts to wind down and preparations for postseason play beginning. The men's season mirroring that of the women's side. Penultimate weekend of ACC men's soccer. And we're glad to have you with us for this matchup in Louisville between the Cards and the Hokies. Just one win combined between these two teams. And of course, it's been a weird season, Jeff, but even with that, I don't think I would have believed you if you would have said at this point in the season these two sides would have one combined victory. Well, it's just been so hard for both teams to, to get in a rhythm like everybody else. And I think 
When you talk about Louisville, like we said earlier, they're trying to transition with a, a pretty new roster. Virginia Tech is just, it's been tough for them on the road so far, but they still have opportunities. They both play at Notre Dame. Virginia Tech plays Virginia, a rivalry game. You expect them to get up for that. So there are those opportunities. And it is crazy with only six games, you can really make a big move with just one win. That was a through ball. Time looking for Labovitz. Louisville trying to get off the heels and onto the front foot. Over 15 minutes down. And they really have not threatened the back line of Virginia Tech at all. But now here is something. And Svanavelt coming off of his line. All right, Jeff, 15 minutes down. Your impressions so far? Well, Louisville is really on the back foot, like you said. They're defending a lot. And even just now when they were in possession, they're not flowing bodies forward. Their fullbacks are still back in a defensive posture. And they're just not pressing Virginia Tech's buttons at all getting forward. Virginia Tech getting a little bit more overlap. But to Louisville's credit, they have defended well so far inside the box. They've seemed confident for the most part. And as a result, we still have sort of a KG start to this thing. Blacklock. A ball coming across from Jacob Bloomler. This time Labovitz is batted down in the area. Virginia Tech coming off a pair of draws. 1-1 with Syracuse, 1-1 with Virginia. They lost their opening round match 4-2 to number one Pitts to kick off the season. They've given up the early goal in two of their last three matches. Have at the very least tonight gotten past that. have certainly been the aggressor early on in this first half. Blacklock surveying, curling it back in with the left. Here's an opportunity punched away by Jake Kelnovach. It was all set up there from Blacklock with the fake right-footed cross dragged to his left foot. It's a really sneaky good move from Blacklock to get him some angle there to flip across in. Watch this right here. This is a little whoop. Slips it inside, <laughs> left foot. Really nice cross. Lamine Conte kind of lost his depth there for a second. Gelnovac, that's what a goalkeeper's for. And he comes off his line to snatch that corner kick out of midair. It's a good opportunity for Cameron Lennon. On that ball coming across from Nick Blacklock. And again, the chances mounting for Virginia Tech here in the first half. There's just not any cohesion here with Louisville's possession. Okay, now they've got Abdi Kadir being that shuttler between, but there's just no midfield right now for Louisville. They look like they all want a, a long ball. And, in order to get into possession, they got to do what they're doing right now. Fonseca with space, has a go, and Fonseca has it parried away by Svanaveld. Right as I'm saying that, Matt, that, that's exactly what I was talking about. Fonseca dropping back to collect. There was nobody in the midfield for Louisville. Fonseca clearly saw that and decided to come back in, get the ball, and that's what he can do. He gets it on that right foot. It's tailing away from Svanaveld. And he had to make a good save there. That thing had dip, pace, a little swerve to it, just about everything you want on a shot. The goalkeeper up to the task. A little mustard a little, on yeah, that shot for Fonseca. I like it. Svanavald, full extension. Here's a corner ball, still loose, batted away. The first shot of the night for Louisville. Five already for Virginia Tech, but that might be enough to get the spark started for the cards. Here is out the Kadir working the near sideline. Back to Fastine. A sample rotating it wide. And Portman plays it all the way back to Lamine Conti. 
See, this is, so Louisville right here in possession. They're recovering from a corner and they're too slow to get back into their setup to be able to have passing options. And as a result, they're having to come back and kind of recharge things. Carlos Sanchez behind the back line, edge of the 18. Defended by Bloomler. Bloomer, such a gritty defender. Abda Kadir trying to thread it through, nothing doing, and Virginia Tech escapes the possible threat. Every Saturday morning, the huddle with Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, and Mark Ritt gets you ready for ACC football. They'll preview the slate of games, keep you updated on all things ACC football. And our Halloween edition, Saturday, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. I expect to see some magnificent costumes. And if I know Jordan Cornett, I think he might have something up his sleeve. Oh, man. Are you dressing up tomorrow? So tune in. I, I don't have a costume, right. I got to admit. What about you? I'm scary enough as is. I don't need to dress up. <laughs> Here comes Nico Diaz stopped in his tracks. Nathan Durst coming off the back line. What's your go-to candy for Halloween? You're going to make me pick one? I guess Reese's Cups. I mean, that's My man. the obvious choice. Is there anything better? I, got, I do have a, I do have a, a, a 1B, though, and that's Butterfinger. Okay. I can get down with that. Labovitz playing it off for Pereira and sticking his foot out to keep it out of the back of the net. Jake Galnovich coming up with another huge save for the cards. I was about to say the last five minutes or so have been much, much better for Louisville getting forward in possession. Virginia Tech though on the counter there, almost sneaking one past Gelnovac up to the task. Really good foot save there. Just a reflex stop from the red shirt senior. Midway through the opening half and this game's starting to open up a little bit. Louisville's really grown into it and Virginia Tech responding a little bit now, but Louisville was on the back foot the first 15 minutes, looked much more confident on the ball. They're getting on in a little bit more possession. First big takedown of the match, and our central referee, Mark Kladlicek, coming over to check on, I believe it's Cameron Lennon. William Portman with the takedown. And no booking, just a warning and a hard tackle from Portman. Yeah, it comes in there, a little hip check action. Could go either way on that. It was, it was physical, but uh, there hasn't been that much physicality out of bounds uh, from the usual physicality so far. So pretty straightforward, no call, I think, from the referee. Portman is a no-nonsense type of cat he on doesn't the back mess line. Around. The junior from <laughs> Sheffield, England. They play a hard-nosed brand of soccer. Came up in the Sheffield United Academy setup. And not unlike a handful of his teammates on the pitch tonight, sat out for a significant portion of the 2019 campaign last year, which really just makes what Louisville was able to do in the postseason in 2019 even more spectacular, making it all the way to the Sweet 16 before falling to eventual champion Georgetown. I was going to say about Portman, if you're going to play for a club in England nicknamed the Blades, <laughs> you're probably going to be a pretty tough guy. Couple of substitutions for Virginia Tech. Khalil Dover coming onto the pitch. Provides a spark at six foot three, the junior from Reston, Virginia. 
And Landon Amaris, the freshman from Palmetto, Florida, comes in as well. Amaris, an Atlanta United Academy product. Has an assist already this season. Attacking player for them should be able to help them getting forward. Dover, who has just come on, where's number 14, plays primarily up top as a target forward. Somebody who's had a breakout season this year for Virginia Tech. And without a doubt, somebody that the Holt Pereira can get the ball to in a position of danger in these last 18 minutes of the first half. Matt, I, as we were doing our research on this game, I was reading about Khalil Dover. The dude was a kicker for his high school football team. He's got a foot. Special teams player of the year. I mean, hey, if, if the Hokies need a guy. Yeah. Get him in there. That's tough, too, for strikers. You want to keep your head down, your shoulders down. Kickers, you want to lean back a little bit. And now an opportunity on a set piece. It'll be the first set piece in a position of danger, not a corner kick here in the first half. Basically like one, though. I mean, it's the same similar angle, very dangerous. If you whip it in with your right foot, it'll be an in-swinger. Near or back post really could be a problem. You see Dover there. He's got Abdi Kadir on him. That's one of your targets, along with Haugli. It's Pereira to take the kick. Haugli, a tall target in the six. They go right for him, and Galdavach knocks it out of play. But it ricocheted off of a Virginia Tech hokey, and so a goal kick coming for Louisville. It's kind of a half cross, half shot there. A lot of pace to it, but the type of situation where you just want to try to get any limb other than your hand, obviously, to redirect that into the goal. And Gelnovac looked like he was prepared for anything, though, getting down to his near post like that. He's been prepared for everything tonight. He's made a couple of unbelievable saves. And Swanevelt has lived up to the billing as well. Fonseca weaving through traffic. Conti will back and forth play with Bryce LaBelle. Abda Kadir chipping it forward. Comes Amaris. Blacklock left wide open on the near side, and Pereira's found him. Overlapping run from Bloomler into the middle. And now Pereira on the edge of the 18, right into the chest of Galnovac. It's not too often that you're going to have Strickler completely unmarked in the box at the penalty spot with the ball coming to him, but he slipped on the wet pitch. Pereira tried to recover it there. Good pace on the shot, little power to it, but right at Gelnovich, and he's not going to struggle with something like that. Sanchez chesting it down. The near side of Fastine. Senko winning it back. Here's Amo. Yeah. 
Diaz playing it down for Amo on the edge of the 18. And charred loose. Yeah, showed a little too much of the ball there. Trying to get the step overs rolling into the box. Black clock with nothing but space. Bloomler. Now Blacklock turning it back. Durst. You really do get the sense that when Blacklock and Pereira have the ball at their feet, good things happen for Virginia Tech. Big takedown. Bradley Sample catching a piece of Pereira. Nothing from the referee, Mark Klavichik, but a free kick coming. And now this one is a bit more advantageous for the Hokies. Yeah, it's an awkward angle. It's sort of a vertical ball here. It's too far out for a shot, but you can play something in here, try to get maybe Dover or Haugli on the end of it. But that just shows you Pereira so difficult in little spaces there. Defensively, you just basically have to either quickly win the ball back from or you're probably going to foul them. It's Kenyua and Pereira. Sophomores lining up over the free kick. Kenyua quickly over to Bloomler. And now Bloomler will play it in. An offside flag comes up. been good fluidity tonight from Virginia Tech. We've seen spurts from Louisville. One really good chance against the run of play for Pedro Fonseca. But what would you like to see from the cards here in the last 12 minutes of the first half? Well, you mentioned the Fonseca opportunity he dropped back into this little half space where he can kind of operate in between the lines and get the ball at his feet and turn. If he if he can turn, he plays downhill. He's got great vision. He can tell when he's got an opportunity to shoot. Like I said earlier, he can pass people open. He sees runners really well. So they've got to keep figuring out ways to rotate him through their formation and get him into the midfield, get the ball at his feet. It's just kind of felt like he's been a little too disconnected. He just seems to me like the key to everything that Louisville wants to do going forward. Haji Abdekadir setting it up. Eric Dankwa awaiting entry. First substitution of the night for the cards. Headed on by Sanchez and a one hop into the midst of Swanefeld. It's a good ball there from Abdi Kadir. Plays it back behind the defensive line there to have one of his teammates come track it. Sanchez just couldn't redirect it with enough power. Blacklock has been left unmarked much of the night on the right side. And again, they go away from him to the left. Black clock, if you look, you can't see him on your screen, but we've got a great view. He's got 20 yards of space. And right before this sequence here to come over to the right, you saw Fonseca coming back. He had to make the decision, Pereira or Blacklock. He goes Pereira. Pereira dancing. Pereira with the left. And just a bit off balance, falling down as he put that shot on net. Easy doing for Jake Kelnovac. Pereira, you can see him here. He basically decided about one yard into a 15-yard dribble there that he was going to shoot <laughs> and just couldn't quite get the angle he wanted and then scuffed it. Probably one of the easier saves that Gelnovac will be able to make tonight. Carlos Sanchez comes out for Louisville. Eric Denkwa coming in. The freshman from Accra, Ghana. Same hometown as... Alex Ajeti, the sophomore for Virginia Tech. Good Sanchez, a breather. He hasn't really been able to get on the ball a ton. I know they like him as another playmaking option. Along with Fonseca, you can move him around the top of your formation, but he just hasn't 
been able to sort of establish that connectivity with the midfield to be able to open things up with his passing ability. Well, here is Khalil Dover, long-legged stride, headed away by Lamine Conti, avoiding danger. Here is Dequa. Virginia Tech really committing numbers forward here. Two men on the back line within 50 yards of Louisville's back line. And even Swanefeld is way out of the six yard box. Well, the first half. Yeah, they're ending the first <laughs> half aggressively here. Sweeper keeper. I think the big fella should come even further up. Come get some, big fella. Come play. Make it interesting. Yeah, a little indoor soccer goalkeeper come all the way up to the half line. I love it. Jose Chilavert. There is Blacklock. Defended by Fastine. Blacklock keeping the ball on a string. Back out to Bloomler. And Kenyua into the mix. Pereira. And Pereira turned back. And Blacklock again. Blacklock on the end line, headed away by William Portman. Labovitz. Haugly in the middle. I've been so impressed with Blacklock. He is so good with his movement, drifting out wide right to know when he's available. Cheeky on the ball, really capable of uncorking a whole arsenal of moves. And he crosses a good ball too. He's a really effective player. I'm very impressed with him in this first half. At five assists last year as a freshman, starting 15 of 19 matches. He has started every match so far this year. Now Virginia Tech, here's Pereira coming through and deflected over the top bar and out of play. It'll be a Virginia Tech corner kick with a shade over six minutes left in the first half. Really good trailer there from Pereira to recognize the space in front of him. I mean, he basically had half the city of Louisville in front of him to trot into and just couldn't get the shot high enough to get over the defenders. Dangerous opportunity here. A lot of big bodies in the box. And Galnavach coming through to snatch it out of play. Sunday best this week will feature the field hockey match between Wake Forest and BC at noon Eastern, followed by a women's soccer triple header. Virginia Tech, Boston College, then fifth ranked Duke squares off against Miami. And number one, North Carolina hosts number 13, Notre Dame in Chapel Hill to round out our Sunday's best. It's all right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Final five minutes of the opening stands up here in the Derby City. Playoff implications on the line for both sides. Virginia Tech still in search of its first win in 2020. Here is Blacklock bringing it forward. Dancing, Blacklock with the left and off the thigh of Levine Conti. And a corner kick coming from the near side now. Blacklock has been the star of the first half. And Fonseca there for Louisville, imploring his teammates to get back and get some shape. Ten shots already in this first half for Virginia Tech. And Blacklock so dangerous with the ball at his feet. Bloomler in swinging ball. Back out to Pereira. And Pereira is a little too loosey-goosey. Dequa all over Bloomler. And now Blacklock again. And a takedown, Fonseca getting a bit testy. Will Mark Klavlicek go into his back pocket? 
Doesn't appear so. Pereira reached out there with his foot, it looked like. But Fonseca just, as I said, trying to get his teammates to be a little bit more intense, comes back. He's trying to defend there. Yeah, it's a clear foul. But a uh, little kick there from Pereira, but a dangerous, another dangerous free kick here, set piece for Virginia Tech. Pereira. And headed away by Bryce LaBelle. And a corner kick coming again for Virginia Tech. And they will bring on one more substitution. Kyle Stenzel, sophomore from Staunton, Virginia. Strickler coming off. Stenzel coming on. And the clock stopped by Mark Kladlicek. Some extracurriculars <laughs> to end the first half. Lamine Conti and Sievert Haugli. I'm not saying it's happening right now, Matt, but you just don't want to know what goes on in the little clusters before free kicks in the box. The things that you're taught as a kid coming up. Are you saying there's some gamesmanship? Little Jeff shenanigans. <laughs> Playing between the lines. Can you up? Bloomler. Floating it forward. And not on target, but again, another corner kick here in these final five minutes. Virginia Tech's had three in the last 90 seconds. Louisville has defended it well here in this first half, but Virginia Tech clearly believes that they've got the ability to create havoc with those back post runs. They're launching crosses back post off the back shoulder every time. Near post, punched away by Galnovac, off his line and cleared by Elijah Amo. Galnovac has played as well as you could ask in these first 45 minutes. Galnovac and Blacklock, I think, and Pereira have been the three best players on the field tonight. Amaris bringing it forward. And you up. Pereira again has a go from distance. And a loose ball picked up by Galnovac. Perhaps a wide eyed surprise for Jake Galnovac from that far away. Ambitious from Pereira. About 30, 35 yards out. It knuckled on him. And those are really, really difficult for goalkeepers. It was tailing away from him, it was on target. And nice recovery there from Gelnovac. Typically, you'd just be happy with a parry. But when the uh, opposing team's striker is coming quickly at you, you need to have the good reflexes to match. And that's exactly what Gelnovac did there. This first half has been indicative of Virginia Tech season in a nutshell. They've had a lot of chances, but have not been able to capitalize Last two games, they've had 47 shots and just two goals. And tonight, they are in double figures already in shots with five on target and still a nil-nil draw. To their credit, it, it has not been a lack of quality. No. I mean, Gelnovac has been up to the task in a couple of different situations, but the shots have been on target and real threatening ones. Fonseca on the seat of his pants. Nothing from Kladnicek. Here's Nico Diaz, final 20 seconds of the first half. Amo, back heel, nothing doing. Pereira scoops it out of the way. Amaris, forward for Dover, defended by Conti. Dover looking for space, and that'll count as another shot on goal for Virginia Tech, although it was nothing but ease for Jake Galnovac. Exciting first 45 minutes, my friend, here at University of Louisville. Very exciting, no goals. It got a little cagey there in the second half of this first 45 minutes, but a fun, fun game. Looks like it might open up here in the second half. We'll be interested to see what adjustments are made by the two head coaches. These teams are fighting 
for a spot in the ACC postseason tournament. 45 down, 45 to go from the Derby City. Between your midfield and your back line, there has not been enough opportunities or options for them to pass the ball into the midfield and turn up field. Then away we go for half number two, the final 45 in regulation from the Derby City. Virginia Tech playing for its first win of the ACC slate in 2020. Hard to believe after the success they had last year. It's been a weird season for everyone. Virginia Tech's only played three games. And here we are at the end of October. They've done very well to earn a couple of draws coming into the match tonight against Louisville. But they certainly do need at least one win, perhaps two, to secure a spot in the postseason. If the season ended today, they would be on the out looking in. Here is Pereira. Threading it through, Strickler had it poked away by Conti. Portman. Couldn't quite tip it past. What a back heel flip from Pereira. Cameron. You could see right there in that moment, Portman is looking at his teammates who are supposed to provide those outlets for him, saying, hey, you got to come back and help me out here. We need options to pass the ball. The midfield has been kind of abandoned in an effort to be more defensive minded for Louisville. And as a result, they're not able to break on their counter like they usually do. Conti taking down Strickler. And a opportunity coming for Virginia Tech here in the form of a set piece. And not unlike what we saw from them in the first half, coming out guns a blazing here to start the final 45. Certainly have looked more threatening to score than Louisville. Louisville's been very, very good defensively, sound defensively, and Gelnovac is their escape hatch here, but another very, very troubling close-in free kick for Virginia Tech. Pereira has a go and knocked away by Galnovac. And it'll be a goal kick coming for the Louisville senior. He earned the foul there. Galnovac was able to get two fists on it even with all that traffic in front of him. It's a sign of a goalkeeper who's really good at tracking the ball even if he's not in a position to catch it or make much of a play on it, he is capable of finding it in the in the darkness and slapping it away. Well, Kjelnovic, as you talked about, tremendous pedigree. His dad, George, legendary head coach for the Virginia Cavaliers. But John Michael Hayden said that when his career is all said and done, he'll remember Galnovac for how he carries himself. From the minute he stepped on campus, his goal was to help this team win championships and to get to the next level, and he carried himself as such. And, you know, John Michael Hayden said at this level and in this league, most of the guys come in wanting to go pro in some way, shape, or form. And Galnovac lives it every day. Well, you mentioned his dad. It's in his DNA. His mom played field hockey at Iowa. The kid was in the under-18 <laughs> men's national setup. I mean, this is in his DNA to work, to establish that work ethic, and just that dedication to the craft. So I'm not surprised to hear John Michael Hayden praise him like that. And it's borne out in the results that, of this career that he has had at Louisville. The 19 career clean sheets. Here's Blacklock on the far side. Little razzle dazzle. Blacklock tried to slip it through. And it goes out for a corner kick. Really nice vision from Virginia Tech. And that's what the concern has been. It was Cameron Lennon on the pass. But that's what the concern has to be, I should say, for Louisville, is Blacklock constantly wandering into all kinds of space out on that right flank. 
Corner kick, here's Pereira. A little flip back from Strickler. Nothing doing. That is one of the credits, I think, that Louisville's defense and midfield get for that first half as Strickler really has not had a whole lot of opportunities to get his get on the ball and get looks at goal. You have to wonder for Mike Brizendine's side if they have played or would have played as many games in the preseason and to start regular season play as this Louisville team, where would they be in the standings, in the postseason outlook? They've played half the amount of games that Louisville has, not to mention two less preseason games as well. I guess you could say that about all of 2020, couldn't you? Yeah. I mean, it's just what could have been for so many different things. And you got to have patience if you're a coach in these situations, if you're a player. The challenge is obviously you're itching to go play, but you hopefully understand the seriousness of the situation. And it's just been great for these guys to even be able to play any of these games. But nevertheless, a challenge for everyone involved. And yeah, John Michael Hayden echoed those sentiments. You know, his team, too, has been very uh, thrown out of the ordinary, so to speak, by this entire 2020 situation. But he said, we're just happy to be playing soccer. Here's a header chance. And cleared off the back line by Lamine Conti. Back in by Labovitz. Louisville scrambling to clear it off the back line, and they finally do. There's a go from Kinua, and a bit ambitious from the sophomore. How about Lamine? Lamine on the spot. The Philadelphia Union product, Academy product, bailing out his goalkeeper there on the back line. Nice job defensively from the uh, remade central midfielder who's having to play as a center back. <laughs> Somebody who's confident when the ball is coming to him. It's a back line that is uh, much different than last year. Not unlike Virginia Tech, both sides with three different faces on the back line than they had in 2019. Here's Elijah Amo pressing on. Here's Fonseca unmarked on the near side. Wide instead to Sanchez. Amo showing what his speed can be. Fended off Virginia Tech's pursuit even with the ball at his feet. That's tough to do. And now Amo playing it back into the midfield. Virginia Tech like they did in the first half. A flurry of opportunity in the opening 10 minutes. Louisville looking to respond. Throwing coming for Nathan Durst. Louisville pressing its lines forward. Conti into the middle for Bradley Sample. Knocked away by Strickler. Counter opportunity mounting now for Virginia Tech. Overlapping run, Cameron Lennon. Big slide tackle from Bloomler. Blacklock on the edge of the 18 has a go and over the top bar. Nick Blacklock, another golden opportunity for the Hokies testing Jake Gown a match. I don't know what felt like more of an opportunity for Blacklock, the first half shot that just went right outside the back post and this one, he got perfect power on it. Galnovac was beaten but it was always rising. But Blacklock, man, he has been impressive for Virginia Tech. Such a threat coming in off that right flank. He has looked like a top flight goal scorer, and he only has one career goal. 
his multiple assists last year, coming off his first career goal against Syracuse last week. Now here's Cameron Lennon, knocked off by Cameron Sanchez. Pereira rolled right into the midst of Galnovac. Well, folks, this week we've got the Sunday's best, featuring field hockey between Wake Forest and BC at noon Eastern, followed by a women's soccer triple header. Virginia Tech, Boston College, then fifth ranked Duke squares off against Miami, and number one North Carolina hosting number 13 Notre Dame in Chapel Hill to round out our Sunday's best. You can catch it all right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Delighted to have you with us for our little version of Friday Night's Best. It's Football been an entertaining America, match. Baby. Entertaining match Friday of Halloween weekend. The whistle blown by Mark Klavacic. I've not had a booking yet tonight, and it doesn't appear like we'll have one now. It's a big takedown from Jacob Labovitz. You know, we talked about Chatting with both coaches coming into the weekend. As you see this big takedown from Labovitz. I asked <laughs> Mike Brizendine if you could describe Jacob Labovitz in one word, what would it be? And he said hard. He goes 100 <laughs> miles per hour with everything he does. No nonsense, gritty, big man. The enforcer for Virginia Tech. Well, he's a fairly Dickinson transfer, but listen to this. As a high school senior, he won two state championships, 46 goals. Strickler bringing it in across the mouth of goal, and there is the first for Virginia Tech. Hokies are on the board, and it's 1-0 in the Derby City. What did we say minutes ago? Louisville trying so hard to keep Strickler off the ball, and you see what happens when he gets on it. Unbelievable. Goal for Virginia Tech, Labovitz, an electric goal scorer, his first of the season. And let's take a look here, just really nicely, unfortunately set up, if you're Louisville, by a deflection off LaBelle's back, but a good find dragging it back. Good goal for Labovitz, pretty simple finish for him, but squaring it nicely was Strickland. And Bryce LaBelle extremely frustrated with how that run of play shook out. Got a ball ricochet off of his back and landed in the perfect position. And Labovitz, we were just singing his praises. Ball finds him in the six, and he puts it away. And Virginia Tech on the board early. Not often this season that they've gotten on the board first, and now they get to play with a lead for the final 32 minutes. Well, the old cliche in soccer always is the first five, 10 minutes after you give up a goal, or you score a goal, I should say, are the most dangerous. You've got to remember to keep defending, keep playing the way you've been playing, and for Louisville, this is a chance. They've got to respond quickly, punch back. Just keep losing their shape. They haven't really been able to stay in possession, especially in the second half so far. They can get some connectivity in the midfield. Maybe they can get something going. Louisville as a team that, uh, as John Michael Hayden would say, has a lot of fight in them. They've played from behind quite often here in 2020. And I could say the best example of that was them trailing 2-0 late, a man down against Syracuse, and then finding two goals in a span of three minutes to equalize and ultimately earn a draw. Well, we know they can respond. After the red card against Pitt, they turn around and carved out a goal, Elijah Amo, so we know that they've got that ability. Nico Diaz, the freshman, turning it back in. And into the middle now for Pereira.
What would you change, if anything, from John Michael Hayden's point of view to try and find that equalizer? I wonder if maybe you can drop Fonseca a little bit more into the midfield, try to get the ball at his feet, see if he can pick out Amo or Sanchez making runs. Diaz just haven't been able to get him in space at all that often today, and the result is they just haven't had too many opportunities going forward. Portman. Sanchez up the near side for Amo. Tiptoeing down the sideline. And does go back to the men in white. And now Virginia Tech will bring on Khalil Dover. Saw him late in the first half. The man of the match so far, Labovitz. Giving Virginia Tech a one goal lead in the 57th minute. Strickler gives it back to Pereira. On the edge now for Blacklock. Blacklock dancing into the middle and booted away by Portman. Dover floating it just a bit too high. Even when Virginia Tech have its attack jarred loose momentarily, they still maintain that composure. And you just get this feeling of a constant pressure on the Louisville back line. It feels like Louisville has had a hard time tonight keeping its shape defensively. It seems like they're chasing the ball a lot. And the result is Virginia Tech able to navigate their way upfield. They put together a bunch of nice passes that get them into dangerous positions. The finishing hasn't quite been what it needs to be to pump in goals, but they've sure had a lot of opportunities. Louisville up until that goal had been defending really well, but they're starting to come apart a little bit. I'd like to see them try to be a little bit more organized in the midfield defensively to see if they can slow this Virginia Tech attack down. Played back in by Haugley. Here's Cameron Lennon trying to split the defense, and he does. Lennon into the six and knocked away by Bryce LaBelle. Dover. Pereira. Kenua. In the middle for Strickler, who turns it wide. There's been great patience and connectivity tonight on the side of the Virginia Tech Hokies. Played with great pace, effort, and precision. I was going to say, it's usually a sign of a good night when your two center backs, Haugley and Durst, and then Kinua as your holding midfielder. We haven't had to say their names a whole lot no. tonight. They've been basically standing at midfield waiting for, for action, and that's usually a good sign if you're Virginia Tech. Three shots on goal for Virginia Tech in the half. None for Louisville. And that's been the story of the night for the entirety of this match. So plenty of soccer to play, though. Louisville can't afford to do is give up another and headed away by Portman. Corner kick coming for Virginia Tech. Blacklock just doesn't seem to have an off switch, man. He just goes. He just he's comfortable going right at defenders. He's whipping crosses in. He's had a couple of shots. He has had a heck of a game tonight. And to not have an assist or a goal yet for him is, seems unfair. Eighth corner for Virginia Tech. In swinging ball back post. And I believe it was Dover getting ahead on it. 
Here's another look at that Virginia Tech goal. Unlucky for LaBelle. And then Labovitz, right place, right time, putting it away. Strickler has that vision, that ability to find his teammates, stay calm. It's what you would expect out of a second team all ACC guy. Traffic in front of you, traffic around you, defenders chasing you, and to be able to pick out a pass like that is a sign of a quality player. Sweet way to come back, too, for Jacob Labovitz. Missed the Syracuse match with a red card, sustained in the game against Virginia, and then comes back tonight and gives his side a one-goal lead in really what feels like a must-win game for the Hokies. We keep talking about it, but their schedule, brutal. Absolutely brutal to have to play at Virginia and at Notre Dame to finish this thing out. You come here, you know Louisville's a talented squad, but they're struggling a little bit this season. Maybe you come here, you get three points and put yourself in great position to get into that top four and make the tournament. Beautiful ball through to Sanchez. It's held up by Cameron Lennon. Portman playing it back for Hanji on to Kadir. And he coughed it up. Kenua now back the other way. Dover. And Conti turning it all the way back to Galnavac. Talk about the schedule for the Hokies. They finished the 2019 season with the second toughest schedule in the country. And over the last three years, 2020 not included, they have had a schedule inside the top 10 in toughest schedules in the country. You're going to rack up some tough games when you're in this league, and it's clear. I mean, these teams, like we said, one win between them, and I consider both of them to be pretty good. Louisville sideline imploring the men on the pitch to maintain composure and effort. Eric Dankwa coming on, and Carlos Sanchez coming off. And now Dankwa, we saw him at the end of the first half, but in the words of head coach John Michael Hayden, he will be somebody that is very special, particularly in the attack as the years go on here on campus. Dealing with a bit of an injury this year, but decorated career with the Philadelphia Union setup. YSC Academy. Many a player in this league coming out of that program. Including Louisville's Abu Bakr Kamara who is out tonight with a red card. And perhaps that's been part of the reason why they just have not found their shape offensively. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech. Nick Blacklock has a go, and again, tipped away by Jake Galdovich. Unbelievable, the senior tonight for Louisville. This is why Blacklock is so dangerous, because he's so quick and so capable of ripping that shot with his right foot that the defenders have to accommodate and respect that. But he's got that little drag cutback, too, that he's got in his bag, and he pulled it out there. Gelnovac had to make another <laughs> really good save. And you look at the look on Blacklock's face. He's just like, come on, man. <laughs> what is it going to take? He's had three great opportunities tonight, all, all created from his dribbling. And when you have someone like that who is wearing you out defensively, the problem is, is it pinches your formation back on the side of the field where he is because you've got to be concerned about him. And on a team like Virginia Tech, when you've got Pereira, you've got Strickler, you've got other options, having a guy like Blacklock out there to pull defenders makes you a much more dangerous team. I mean, it feels like maybe it should be two or three nothing at, with the, you there. at this point. Gelnovac yeah. has had an excellent, excellent game for Louisville. He really has been sensational. He's made a couple of spectacular saves that you know if it weren't for him being in between the sticks tonight it could very well be a three goal lead for Virginia Tech 
Fonseca applying pressure now. Sample playing it forward. And the offside flag comes up. Just haven't been able to find a solution to their lack of cohesive attack in possession. Louisville has gotten so used to not having possession that when they're in possession, everything seems rushed. Nobody's coming to the ball to be an option. What a run from William Portman, drawing a foul and earning a free kick for the Cards. He's been down the right flank here a couple of times trying to switch into that attacking fullback mode and getting frustrated at times that the ball has not made its way back to him. But he's another guy who, if he gets ahead of steam, he gets downhill, he can cause some trouble dribbling down the flank. Abdekadir lining it up about 45 yards out. And Conti. The lines are so high right now for Louisville that there's not a single player on the back line playing in the defensive third. And now here comes Dover. A dangerous back play to Gelnovac, clears it away. Strickler leaves it off for Blacklock, chipping it into the middle, but nobody home. Nico Diaz, Bradley Sample. Simply put, Louisville just do not have the amount of substitutions tonight that we've seen earlier in the season. And so that's part of the reason why they just have not been able to change anything up against Virginia Tech. Now here's a run from Amo turning it back in. Elijah Amo has leveled it at Louisville. That is an excellent goal from Louisville as Pedro Fonseca has the ball at his feet. And you could tell right away he was trying to figure out a way to carve out some space for Amo. Great finish from him and now it looks like he's hurt after the finish. What a goal from Elijah Amo in the 72nd minute, finding the equalizer. And it's a run like we saw against Pitt last week, Jeff Greer. That is, I mean, that is a sublime pass from Pedro Fonseca. The finish was up to the up to meeting that uh, high level of a pass there. I do wonder if maybe Swanavell will feel he could have done better there. He's kind of caught out at an awkward angle, but Pedro Fonseca looked up, and that's kind of been something that's been missing for Louisville. He looks up. And he sees he might have a runner who can slip into the half space. And that's exactly what he did. Carved out a pass. He passed Amo open. Amo using that pace to go collect the ball. And if you're a center back and this dude's running at you with the ball at his feet. <laughs> Good luck, my friend. Yes. Good it's luck. It's not going to be a fun trip. So Amo comes off the pitch, hopefully just momentarily for the Louisville side. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech have subbed back in a pair of players who we saw in the first half. Landon Ameris and Kyle Stenzel for these final 18 minutes and change. But we've got a new match with postseason implications on the line. Louisville finding the equalizer when the chances just were not there, Jeff Greer, to start the second half. Yeah, against the run of play a little bit for Louisville, but that is what they do well. They counterattack well. They try to pack it in defensively. They've struggled at times keeping their shape and keeping their organization in the midfield and defensively, but we, can't, we keep talking about it. If you can get Pedro Fonseca the ball at his feet, he is going to make it happen with those magenta boots. I mean, he is going to figure out a way. He had that rip in the first half from like 30, 35 yards out. Looked like it was on target. Forced a goalkeeper save. And then that pass, man, that was just an excellent, excellent pass to Elijah Amo to set that goal up. So Amo on the sideline right now being attended to by the training staff. 
Meanwhile, Aiden Nokus, the freshman, coming in to replace Amo, at least for the moment. 1-1, we are level in the Derby City. And you just feel, with the way this game has been played and how open it's been, we are not done yet with the scoring tonight. It has been open. It does seem like either team, if they can get fresh legs and get the ball at the, le at the feet of those guys with fresh legs, <laughs> everyone seems to have kind of dialed it down a little bit the last few minutes here as it's been a physical match. It's been a higher pace match. Where's people out? Here's Pereira. Pereira still. And a shot on goal batted down by Galnovac. And that was Stenzel giving it a rip. Well, folks, tomorrow, Halloween, college football lineup with three treats right here on the <laughs> ACC Network and ESPN app. Wake Forest squares off against Syracuse at noon Eastern. Then Bob Tech takes on Louisville. American football style at eight, and then it's the South's oldest rivalry game. This one dates all the way back to guess what, Jeff? 1892. Virginia hosts number 15 North Carolina in Charlottesville. Our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. Not one, but three treats, my friend. <laughs> You're really having fun with the Halloween thing, aren't you? Well, candy's my kryptonite, particularly chocolate and peanut butter. Fair enough. That combination just, yeah. I don't think you can beat it. If I'm given three treats, I'm going Reese's for all three. That's pretty, that's that's steadfast. I like if, it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got to say, it's pretty impressive for a, a rivalry to go back to, I think, Benjamin Harrison's presidency. Now you're pulling out the push, history book on pushing me. a little too far? <laughs> Grover Cleveland, somewhere in there? 1892, the South's oldest rivalry match. That is Virginia and North Carolina. I'm looking forward to uh, popping the feet up on the couch, getting the fire going, maybe a little bowl of candy and some popcorn. <laughs> Really going hard on the candy, man. Yeah. This is well, a big weekend we've for been you. talking about it all night long, so Swanavald punches it away. Now I want candy. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about it. Pit stop after the match tonight. <laughs> Does seem to have slowed down a little bit here last. Mm couple minutes since Louisville scored. Virginia Tech has tried so many different ways to pick the lock. They did get the one goal, but they just haven't really been able to figure out Gelnovac. It's been Gelnovac is the difference between it being like three to one or being one to one as it is. Here's Portman on the near side, turning it back in. Fonseca marked by Haugley as he has all night long. Nokus coughs it up. Pereira winning it back, and he plays it back to Swanavell. In a match like this, Jeff, where, as you say, Virginia Tech just really have not been able to unlock Jake Galnovac, what does that do to your psyche, especially in a 1-1 draw in the final 15 minutes? How do you adjust to find that game-winning goal? Well, I don't think the wolf gives up on the pig's house, so you got to just keep huffing and huffing and puffing and <laughs> trying to blow the house down. Galnovac is a formidable shot stopper, just an excellent goalkeeper, so it's no easy task, but you basically just keep doing what you're doing and hope you can slip one past him. Certainly chances abound tonight for Virginia Tech. Double-digit shots in both halves. Kinyua chipping it on back post, a little too much. He was looking for Ameris, and Portman watches it trickle out of play. 
Now Virginia Tech will cycle on a pair of substitutions. Labovitz, who had the initial goal to get Virginia Tech the lead in the 57th minute, he comes on. And Christo Strickler coming back in as well. It's nice when you can bring those guys in. You get a, a chance to get them a rest and feel confident enough in your other options that you can get them a quick huff there. I mean, these are two lethal goal scorers, two of the best goal scorers in the conference. And to just get them the quick blow, bring them back in here for the final 12 minutes or so. See if you can get Strickler to cause some havoc again. Some confusion on the Virginia Tech sideline with Bloomler coming off. And so now Chris Little will come on. Bloomler still confused, it appears. Uh, Little, our first time seeing him tonight. He slips in and right back. And Bloomler heads to the bench. Under 12 minutes to play here in the Derby City. And again, if the season ended tonight, Jeff Greer, Virginia Tech would be on the outside looking in as far as the postseason is concerned in the Atlantic Coast Conference. They certainly have it all to do. Notre Dame and Virginia left on their schedule. It's nice to have the option to know, look, if you need to climb the ladder, hey, a couple of the rungs above you are sitting right there. You're ready to hit them. But at the same time, really challenging pair of games for them trying to get into the postseason. And it's not as if Virginia Tech haven't had chances. This is a very talented team. Look at the remaining schedule for both teams here. Haugli has it knocked away. Virginia Tech at Notre Dame at Virginia. Big rivalry match to close out the season. And then Louisville gets Notre Dame one more time, who is their lone win so far on the sheet. That's their last win, which you got to go all the way back to October the 3rd. They beat them here in Louisville by a score of 2-1. to one. At the time, Notre Dame ranked in the top five as well. Here's a shot from way out, dipping back post to Galnovach corrals. Jacob Labovitz there, just a little heat check, see if maybe he can catch Galnovach sleeping, but you're not going to find Jake Gelnovac sleeping on senior night tonight. I mean, this dude is dialed in. He has made every single save asked of him. The goal, not a whole lot he could do about it. And Labovitz trying to get a second, second time in the score sheet there from a little too far out for my taste. Nine saves tonight for Gelnovac. We knew coming in, Jeff, that these two teams were very capable offensively. I'm not sure I expected one of the stars of the match to be the keeper. Well, you look at these shots and shots on goal, 23 shots, 12 of them on goal for Virginia Tech. And you're going to be a busy goalkeeper. The fact that it's still a one on the scoreboard, Jake Gelnovac, I hope somebody gets him a pizza after the game. <laughs> he deserves it. Or you know what? This weekend, a bucket of candy. There you go. I don't know if that's in his diet, though. Maybe, yeah, you're My probably My man is probably, dialed in. You're probably We not. talked about it earlier <laughs> since he stepped on campus every day with his nutrition, his training, and recovery, with his responsibility on and off the pitch, living like a pro from the minute he got to campus. Good news for Louisville. They do have... Elijah Amo up and warming off the bench after he scored that equalizing goal in the 75th minute. Meanwhile, Cameron Lennon coming on and Landon Amaris coming off for Virginia Tech. Blacklock, boy, has he had some unlucky misses tonight. Near misses, in fact. Three just scathing past the bar. Virginia Tech ahead and on goal by Strickler, and it's wide. Blacklock's ability to go from standing in front of you to quick twitch cutback has just kept Louisville on skates all night. 
And you saw it again there. I mean, I feel like I'm a broken record, but he cuts back, gets it on that left foot, teasing cross in. He's looking for Strickler because why wouldn't you look for Christo Strickler? You can see it here. Finds him with that right foot. And he just rises above Portman and skips it by. Portman's still down, though. Portman dealing with what looks to be a cramp, and he has been all over the pitch tonight. Not atypical for him. He's a right back who likes to come into the attack. Very aggressive from the back line, and he has been running all over the place. And he is in pain right now, trying to get stretched out by the training staff and Jake Kelnevats doing a little bit of everything tonight. If you're just joining us, less than eight minutes left in regulation. Virginia Tech found a goal in the 57th minute on a beautiful strike here from Labovitz. Ball in from Christo Strickler. And at that point, you thought, my goodness, maybe Louisville, it's not their night because Virginia Tech have had chances about. But later in the 72nd minute, Amo turning it back in and a beautiful strike, pushing it past Swanevelt to tie it here in the Derby City. Amo came up Gimpy after the goal. He has been out ever since, but he is up and awaiting re-entry on the sideline. Meanwhile, William Portman still being tended to by the training staff. It's one of the biggest, uh, I guess, misperceptions, or I'm trying to think of the right word, but <laughs> when it's cold out, you don't think that players are going to cramp up just because you always think of it when it's 90, 95 degrees out and these guys are struggling. But Louisville's players have logged a lot of miles tonight running up and down this pitch defensively, and it's starting to clearly take a toll on them where they're having to really run their tails off to keep defending these Hokies who have just been peppering Jake Gelnovac with, Gelnovac with shots all night. Haji Abdekadir waiting for game play to resume. He's had a nice night in the midfield. Pedro Fonseca coming off the chat with John Michael Hayden. And there on your screen, you saw number 17, Elijah Amo. And he will finally come back on the pitch as William Portman has come off. And it's an interesting switch because Portman is a defender. And of course, Amo, a striker. And it goes to show A, the short bench tonight for John Michael Hayden, and B, perhaps what they're thinking, which is to go for the win here in regulation, Jeff Greer. Well, they bring in Amo and they push Fonseca a little bit deeper into the center of the midfield. You can see him now talking things over with Sample. You move Abdi Kadir out to that right back spot. He's played there before, so you know he's got that experience. But this could be something interesting here for Louisville. Fonseca, when he gets on the ball, is dangerous. It just has been few and far between for Louisville, so dropping him deeper could present a new opportunity for the Cardinals. I haven't really called Fonseca's name much in this match. He's been man marked all night long by this man right here, Sievert Haugli, the six foot four junior from Norway. And it's not often you see a big man with great feet, but according to Mike Brizendine, the head coach for Virginia Tech, that's exactly what Sievert Haugli is. And it's no surprise when you look at his pedigree. Yep. His father played in the top flight in Norway for many a year at the center back position. I was going to say that his dad, Froda, a pro, you come up through uh, the professional ranks there in Norway, at least in the academy system, you're likely to have that coolness that comfort as a center back in your DNA. It just kind of, it's like Gelnevac, you just kind of have it. And you know what? While we're on the subject, we got to give a shout out to Mama Haugli because she was an absolute stud cross country skier. Love it. And it's very Pepperance. Norwegian. Yeah, very, I love that. yeah. I love it. The Nordic region. Haugli now chipping it across. Six and a half minutes to play. Can one of these sides? Break the deadlock, come away with three points in the end of regulation. 
Virginia Tech again searching for its first win since the start of the 2020 campaign. And Louisville looking for its first win since October 3rd against Notre Dame. And a quick whistle from Mark Klavichik. Now Pereira playing it forward. Elijah Amo back on the pitch for the equalizing goal in the 72nd minute. And Fonseca turning it all the way back for Bryce LaBelle. Extra pep in the step of the cards, it seems to me, after that 72nd minute equalizer. Kanua giving it back to Pereira, and he's dragged down in the midfield. And now, Kavlicek will go to his back pocket, and it's a booking for Bryce LaBelle in the 85th minute. That is as professional a foul as you're going to see, <laughs> as Bryce LaBelle trying to carry it through some lines there as a center back. He toe pokes it away, couldn't quite pick out the pass, and suddenly realized that he was awfully high up the stream without a paddle. So you got to hustle back, and you know what? You might as well just commit a foul, let your team reset. Eric Tankwa whistled for the infraction. Lines coming forward again for Virginia Tech. Haugli and Dirt across the midway point. Now it's wide for Kyle McDowell. Lennon turning it back in. Pereira escaping. Pereira still. And knocked away. There's Aiden Nokas. And Strickler tripped up by Fonseca. And he's got some extra words. And that will be a booking. Kavlicek showing a yellow card to Fonseca. Well, I think that's kind of a, an eruption of game-long frustration for Pedro Fonseca. I know he created the goal. He had a scoring opportunity in the first half. It's just been tough for him getting on the ball. He's trying to implore his teammates at times to play with a little bit more, shall we say, pizzazz, a little bit more spunk. And uh, I don't think he feels like he touched anybody the second time there but he's got to be careful here as a referee is still talking to him and this team is on notice because yeah. they played the last three matches a man down five yellow or red cards rather in the last six games for the cards Kanua plays it forward for Strickler probably dating myself here for soccer fans but it's a little uh Patrick Vieira, Frank <laughs> LaBeouf level red card collection, but it's from the team instead of just one guy. Pereira dancing back, Fonseca on his right hip. Kanua now turning it back into the midfield. 3.50 left in regulation. If we are still tied at one apiece, after 90 minutes, overtime awaits. Nokas and back for McDowell. Haugli. Now Bradley Sample. Tanqua. And Nokas chipping it back to the Kadir. Gotta say, Aiden Nokas has had a nice little energetic performance here. The freshman from Danville, FC Dallas Academy product. He's come in out on this right flank. He's kind of had to be a spell guy that has ended up extending his stay a little bit, but he's done a nice job with a little bit of energy when Louisville really desperately has needed that. Referred to by John Michael Hayden as scrappy. Just works his tail off every minute he's in. Here's Pereira. And he's left it off for Cameron Lennon. He's crossed the mouth of goal and nobody home. 
Good patience there from Pereira to hold up, see what his options were. And obviously not the best ball that they could have had in that situation. As Lennon was trying to, I think, cut it across the six yard box, but it was just a little too in front of his teammates. Great spell for Nokas. And he comes off. Nico Diaz comes back on. Freshman for freshman. Two of the ten new faces this year for John Michael Hayden. Diaz, 44 goals and 65 starts for Orlando City SC's academy setup. Certainly has a nose for goal. He's playing back defensively now, though, and here is Diaz. 90 seconds left in regulation. Pereira turning it back into the midfield. Fonseca now slipping it past. It's Fonseca and Sanchez. And now Daqua. Sanchez tripped up. And it's rolled out of bounds. And it'll be a corner kick for Louisville with 60 seconds left in regulation. That is an inch perfect slide tackle there from Hurst. Danger starting to develop there. He had to get it right. And he did. I think they'd be happy to concede the corner here to at least get a chance to get some bodies back. But now Louisville has a chance to pump something into the box and see if they can get it on frame. Nico Diaz to take the corner. He's got Fonseca, Sample, LaBelle, and Carlos Sanchez. And they've switched out. Haji Abdekadir now setting up the corner kick. Probably the last chance of regulation. Abdekadir goes near post. Here is Denkwa. And it's misfired altogether. And that will probably be the final shot of 90 minutes of regulation. It's as, it's as hard of a shot as you're going to get for Denkwa. And he just couldn't quite get his foot around. Well, folks, Friday night football continues from the Derby City. 1-1 after 90 minutes, Jeff Greer. Overtime awaits us. These teams are absolutely deadlocked. It's been a good defensive effort from Louisville. Jake Gelnovich, a goalkeeper, has had a heck of a game. The man of the match, really. But Virginia Tech just keeps knocking on the door and then having to defend those counterattacks. Something's got to give at some point, you would think. 1-1 one, one after 90. Extra time coming from Louisville with postseason implications on the line. Must see soccer continues from Louisville in a moment. Not quite as energetic turkeys as we start over time. They've been out here a while and during the elements. Welcome back to Louisville. 1-1 after 90 minutes. Overtime to come. Virginia Tech got us started scoring early. And then Louisville coming back. As you take a look at the overtime rules, two 10-minute periods. The big one is the subs. No re-entry in the first or second overtime periods. If it's still tied after two OTs, it ends in a draw, which is something Virginia Tech does not want because if the season ended today, they would not be in the ACC tournament. Here is how we got here. It started in the 57th minute. Virginia Tech sort of against the run of play, Jeff. Off the back of Bryce LaBelle, Strickler finding the foot of Labovitz. Yeah, really nice counterattack there to get the quick goal. Just carved open Louisville and got a quick one. And then quintessential Elijah Amo slipping past the back line and a beautiful shot with the off foot leveling it at one apiece and that is where we leave it now 1-1 after 90 minutes virginia tech in search of its first win in 2020 louisville in search of a win that would seal up their postseason bid in the acc tournament is that all that's on the line tonight i mean it just <laughs> seems like uh, i mean this is really high stakes acc soccer Everything to play for. Virginia Tech, of course, aware that it still has Notre Dame and Virginia on the schedule. They have to get three points today. 
And Louisville aware that they've got to go to Notre Dame. This is a great opportunity on senior night to take advantage of the emotion of the moment and get yourselves into that ACC tournament. So everything to play for here in these 20 minutes. And here we go. Overtime number one. Virginia Tech in the all-white road kit. Louisville in the black and red checkered uniforms. Lavelle leaves it off for Blacklock. We've called his name many a time tonight. He's had a couple of near misses. Haugli shooting it forward for McDowell. There's Pereira, who's been the conductor in the midfield for Virginia Tech. McDowell. Labovitz beat out on the header. Kanua hounded by Denkwa. And Pereira wide again for Kyle McDowell. Left back likes to come into the attack. Has great service with the left foot. Well, we haven't seen it much yet tonight. And Labovitz has it poked away by Pedro Fonseca. And Pereira again. Strickler now. McDowell into the area. Strickler punched back out. And McDowell serves it in. Pereira. Blacklock. Strickler. Back post and wide. Every single thing from Blacklock tonight has been delivered with pace and threatening. I mean, he has just kept pumping in really good service into the box. That time just kind of landed in an awkward way for Strickler. Gelnovac looked like he might have been caught in between two different options for Virginia Tech there, so I'm sure he's happy it didn't take a deflection toward goal. Strickler trying to get it past Conte. Strickler. And cleared off the back line by Jack Fastine. Little into the middle for Labovitz. Has a go, and Labovitz has ended it in overtime. Jacob Labovitz with the brace. And Virginia Tech picks up its first win in 2020. Well, you could sense it building. Virginia Tech just came out. Absolutely charged up, looking for a goal. First two minutes here of overtime, and Labovitz, all he needed was an inch of space. You could see it as soon as the ball gets to his feet. The big fella is looking. I mean, he's hungry. He's ready to eat again for a second time, and he just rifles it into the top corner. An electric goal. Tough for Louisville to take, but a big win for Virginia Tech. Set up by Chris Little. Labovitz with space. Just an absolutely clinical shot in traffic. I mean, look at that. It's tailing away. Absolutely nothing. You feel for Jake Gelnovac. There's nothing he could have done about it after having a brilliant game. And really, I mean, Louisville's defenders trying to close down Labovitz. Just couldn't quite close the door on it before the ball got to his feet. And man, this is a guy who has made a career of pumping the ball into the back of the net. And he's done it twice.